What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack of Packs series. Today we're opening up a pack of Ixalan. Obviously a relatively new set, not a ton of awesome stuff in here, but still a few really awesome cards that I'm hoping we pull. Uh, as always, we're going to look at this from a draft scenario, so we're we will hopefully figure out what our pack one pick one would be uh, if we were actually drafting this set. So we will go through every card, and our first one here is Dual Shot. Uh, an instant for one red, it deals one damage to each of up to two target creatures. Uh, this is actually a fairly useful card in this set, only because there are a lot of small, like, unblockable pingers, uh, especially in sort of the merfolk tribe. There's also quite a lot of tokens in the vampires uh, side of things, so this actually does some really awesome work in this set. Uh, not the best removal by any means, but still pretty good. Uh, Legion Conquistador is a 2-2 for 2 and a white. Uh, it's a vampire soldier, which does have a lot of synergy uh, within this set. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards named Legion Conquistador, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, this is very similar to like Squadron Hawk. Uh, if anybody knows sort of the old school white weenie deck, Squadron Hawk is really, really good in that deck. Uh, this is just sort of one more expensive. It doesn't have flying, but it is a 2-2. Uh, it's not a bad card. It's not something you necessarily want to first pick by any means, but it's not bad. Uh, Mark of the Vampire. Three and a black for an enchantment. It's an enchant creature, and the enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has lifelink. I don't really like this card. Uh, I generally don't like enchant creatures, as most of you guys know, uh, because it really sets you up for a two for one, unless somehow the enchantment comes back or maybe the creature comes back it's really just like committing so much to a singular card and then if they remove it you lose two for just the price of one so i don't really like cards like this this is really not something i look forward to drafting uh frenzied raptor is a four two for two and a red vanilla creature but it is a dinosaur which does again have a lot of synergy in this set uh it's not an amazing card unfortunately it's kind of just curve filler uh, it dies really, really easily. It does have a lot of power uh, with four. Uh, being a three drop, that's actually quite good. But uh, with the toughness of only two, it's going to die pretty easily. So not a huge fan of that. Uh, Siren Lookout. A one, two for two and a blue. It has flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it explores, which means you reveal the top card of your deck. Uh, put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, you put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature and put that card back in on top of your uh, deck or into your graveyard. Uh, so it's really up to you. It's sort of like filtering. Uh, this card's really, really good, actually. Uh, it's it's not amazing. Obviously, it's a 1-2 flyer, not anything crazy and to write home about, but it is an evasive threat, and it helps you dig through your deck. So far, unfortunately, I kind of like this card best. Uh, not too many great things so far. Uh, Ravenous Dagger Tooth is a 3-2 for 2 and a green. It has Enrage. Uh, so whenever it's dealt damage, you gain two life. I really like the enrage mechanic. You can actually abuse it really hardcore in this set, uh, which is really fun. This, unfortunately, is not one of the big payoffs. Uh, life gain in general, usually not a huge payoff and uh, limited just because without being able to fully, fully commit to it by constructing a deck, you're really just relying on sort of bits and pieces to make it work, and it just doesn't do it, its job as well as it could. So... I'm not a fan of this card, unfortunately, though it isn't bad. It's a decent three drop in the dinosaur deck. Uh, Demystify, one white for an instant, destroy target enchantment. Really straightforward card, definitely a sideboard card, but something that you'd be happy to have as a sideboard option. Uh, there are decks that run some actually pretty powerful enchantments, so happy to have this in a sideboard uh, scenario, though definitely not first pick. Uh, contract Killing, here we go. So a sorcery for three and two black. Destroy target creature and then create two colorless treasure artifact tokens with tap, sacrifice this artifact, and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This is the kind of card I want to see. Uh, this is a great card. Obviously, it's removal. On five, it's a little expensive, but in limited, that's kind of what we expect, so that's not bad. Uh, it is sorcery speed, not instant speed, so you're not going to be able to play it on your opponent's turn or anything like that, but it actually helps you fix and ramp, uh, which is fantastic. So. Absolutely love this card, definitely one that I would pick first. Uh, hijack, one and two red for a sorcery. Gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn, untap it, and it gains haste until end of turn. This is great in a red aggressive deck. There's also some sacrifice outlets that you might be able to abuse with this. Uh, but in general, this is really just a very, very aggro card, uh, especially in this set. Uh, but it's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it by any means. Not better than contract killing for sure. Uh, Water Trap Weaver is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature an opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its next untap step. 
Uh, this is actually a fantastic card, especially in the Merfolk deck, obviously this being a Merfolk, uh, but it's really, really good. A lot of value and a huge, huge tempo swing. There are ways to sort of fetch certain cards out based on their tribe uh, in this set, which is great. You can actually abuse this pretty hard. Uh, it's great. So I love this card. I don't know that I love it better than Contract Killing as a first pick, uh, but I will keep it to the side just for now. Our, our first uncommon, Deep Root Waters. Whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, create a 1-1 blue Merfolk creature token with Hexproof. This might actually be a best pick so far. Uh, this is really, really good. Obviously, it forces you kind of into Merfolk, which is a little not... Uh, you kind of want to stay open a little bit as early as you can, but uh, being able to just cast two for ones all the time and those those creatures having hexproof just makes this card really really good i love this a lot uh yeah it's you're kind of taking your turn three off to play it but on turn four you're going to be able to get at least two creatures out uh as long as you have only one in your hand so it's really strong very very powerful card uh river sneak is a one one for one and a blue uh merfolk warrior again being very important in this set uh, it can't be blocked, and whenever an mer another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, there's a very, very solid merfolk deck. A lot of that deck is based on creatures being unblockable. Very small creatures, but being able to ping in for a lot of damage, and then build them up with a lot of the lords uh, that we see in this set. So, absolutely love this card for the merfolk deck. I think I like Deep Root Waters more, uh, to be honest, but I still really like that. Uh, Savage Stomp, two and a green for a sorcery. It costs two less to cast if a target if you if it targets a dinosaur you control. Excuse me. Uh, you put a one one counter on target creature you control, then that creature fights target creature you don't control. Uh, so this is really just great removal for the dinosaur deck. You can just use this in any deck, and it's perfectly fine as well. Obviously, it's going to cost a little bit more, but uh, it still is great removal. It's basically a prey upon sort of effect, though you still get to put a one one counter on the creature regardless. Uh, and it has the bonus of being very, very cheap if you are in a dinosaur deck. So I love this card. Uh, not necessarily first pickable above anything else uh, that we've got, but it's definitely great. And our rare is a Blood Crazed Paladin. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a black. It has Flash. It is a Vampire Knight. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, uh, excuse me, it enters the battlefield with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it for each creature that died this turn. Not a huge fan of this card. Uh, Max, I mean, ideally you hope to put one or two counters on this, but even then, it's like a really efficient two drop, uh, which is fine, but it doesn't really have any long-term upside other than being a, an efficient two drop. So not a huge fan of that card, unfortunately. Uh, but I think, honestly, my pick would be Deep Root Waters. Uh, cards that I would definitely consider. Uh, probably... Probably the Contract Killing as the other option. Water Trap Weaver, also great, obviously. Uh, definitely a card I would want, especially if I had the Deep Root Waters. But I like that uh, the Deep Root Waters kind of gives you some direction, um, and it's a hugely, hugely powerful card, something you can really, really abuse, which I like. So that's my pick. Uh, obviously, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. You agree, disagree. Uh, if you did like this video, please make sure to like and leave a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe. Stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Cracker Pack video.